My name is Rory. Often on the internet I go by my old army call sign Hawk 8. Since I got out of the army in 2006 I've done a lot of different jobs and doing all those jobs I've had to look up instructions on the internet. I often find them long-winded and hard to get through. Hence I give you no BS instructionals. Today I'm going to show you how I select resistors for my LEDs. There are three ways to identify the negative or positive leads. First off, the bigger of the two semiconductors inside your LED is the negative. Uh, it's hard for me to say, but, that's, but that is the easiest thing. The flat side and the short leg also indicate the cathode or the negative leg of your LED. A quick Google search can offer plenty of clarity on this. LEDs can survive and function at anywhere between 15 and 30 milliamps. Now, 30 is really bright, 15 is fairly dull. You're going to want to operate somewhere really in the 20 to 25 range, but if you calculate the resistance required to operate between 15 and 30, you now have a range from which resistors can be selected. I use the voltage of my system along with the maximum and minimum current allowable through an LED to calculate two resistances. Those two resistances are the top and bottom limits of my window for selection. For example, in a 5 volt system, I would take the voltage over the current to get the resistance. So, 5 volts over 15 milliamps would give me 333.33 ohms. Now, 5 volts times 0 0.015 amps or 15 milliamps will give me the power consumption expected. And generally speaking, this isn't something you're going to need to concern yourself with in terms of LEDs. A half watt resistor, even a quarter watt resistor, is probably going to be plenty. But then I'll calculate 5 over 30 milliamps, or 5 over 0 .030 amps, and get 166.67, or 167 ohms. So now I know anything between 330 or 167 ohms is going to work, and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 ohms is going to be best. Quarter watts going to be perfectly safe to use, and I have my resistor for an LED at 5 volts. Now I'd like to talk about the idea of having a resistor for each LED. This is important. If you try to select one resistance for all of your LEDs in a system, Regardless of whether you were going to operate those LEDs separately on switches or as an all-on situation, you have a potential for problems when you run one resistor for all. Whether it's a planned part of your design or not, you have to account for the idea that one or more of your LEDs may turn off. They might die, they may be shut off by the switches as shown on the right. In this event, the current is going to increase across the other remaining LEDs. This increase in current can eventually be enough to destroy them. But at the very least, it's enough to say that it would create a situation in which your LEDs cannot be reliably operated. For countless reasons, we will choose our resistance on a per LED basis and add one resistor for each LED, no matter how we intend to control them.